Hi, welcome to episode 427 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, which is where I sell my hand spun yarns and knitting patterns. And um, right now we're gearing up for Tour de Fleece, in, both in the Ravelry group, which is called The Corner of Knit and Tea, and we also have a Team CKT group on Facebook if you are interested in joining. So hi, how are you? I hope that you are doing well. It is Monday, June 12th, and it has been a busy last um, week for me. I have gotten quite a bit done in terms of crafting, but we also had a company Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and so I was out and about quite a bit um, and didn't get as much crafting done as I hoped I would, um, but I have lots and lots of things to show you today, so I don't think there will be any shortage of um, chatting about knitting and spinning. So I hope that you're doing well. I am going to jump right in to what I'm talking about today. I don't have a lot of chitter chatter, um, but that's okay because I have plenty of things to show you. So today I am drinking London tea, a little throwback to when I went to London in 2019. Um, and this is the Tea House, which is a tea shop in Covent Gardens, and it was lovely. Uh, this one has uh, Darjeeling and Ceylon. It's just a good black tea, builder's tea for the afternoon. Um, I do not take mine with milk just with a little bit of sugar and I am drinking it today in my Naughty Birds cup which has all kinds of fun different birds including ones inside the cup um, but I really really love this mug and this was given to me by a wonderful friend and viewer. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> I burned my mouth a little bit but that is really good that will get me through the rest of the afternoon. It is midday here on, um, like I said, Monday, June 12th, we had some rain over the weekend, so now it is a little bit cooler, but it is sunny today, um, and I am rocking my, um, why am I blinking on the name of this? It is a, um, I'm just blinking on everything and I did not knit it. It is a sold out in a crop and it was knit by my friend Anna in Knit Group. And when she got done, she decided that the pink color was not her. So she gave it to me and it is pink and um, blue and I absolutely love it. Um, this is by Caitlin Hunter um, and the pattern is available in a variety of sizes. It is a um, cropped uh, tee and a little oversized. So it's super comfy. I'm enjoying it today. And um, let's get going with the knit. So I talked to you last week and I had all these projects that were so close to finished um, and I finished a lot of them um, and I also started some new ones. So let's talk about them. Um, the one that I am most pleased with, which does mean that there is one that I am least pleased with, um, the one that I am most pleased with is I finished the wrap I was working on as a sample for Zen Yarn Garden. Um, I was working on this in their super fine glitter base, and remember I used um, a blank, which this is what's left of the blank, and it's um, probably about two-fifths of the blank. Um, it's got the blue, and it's got the teal, and blue, and purple, and then just a tad of the yellow, and you will see the rest in the um, in the finished object. I worked with a blank, which is 170 grams and 680 yards, um, and that is in the super fine glitter base. You can probably see a little bit of it. It's 90% superwash merino and 10% stellina. I combined that with um, a skein and a half of the natural um, undyed colorway, which is also in the same base, but it is in a different put up. It is 100 grams and 400 yards. And I combined them in the pattern called Around Every Corner, which is by Stephanie Lotman, who is Telly Bean Knits. And it is kind of a log cabin-ish looking wrap, and I am finished. Now, I have not done any blocking to this. All of my ends have been woven in, although they have not been trimmed yet. I think what I'm probably going to do is just do a simple steam block, and that is because I think um, it will keep the squishy um, garter stitch on this wrap um, really, really lovely and cozy. But it is a wonderfully sized wrap. It is definitely my wingspan. It ended up pretty large, but here is how the gradient works through. So as you can see, you have those strips that are starting sort of sequentially after each other and I just worked those through till I got through a chunk of my gradient. We wanted to make it bigger. Um, the original shawl called for six stripes and um, then the um, ending border which I knit at the same length that I would have um, whether I had finished early or not and I just added nine stripes in a very similar pattern. 
Um, you will need to purchase the pattern to make this work, even if you want to um, make it bigger like I did. And I do have a few notes on my project page on Ravelry that I will be filling in um, with some final stitch counts. Um, and that uh, will enable you, if you purchase the pattern, to then also make the modifications that I did. I'm trying not to give anything away um, from the pattern because of course it is her pattern, um, but it is fairly easy to just continue in the manner in which you had been knitting um, and add a few extra stripes. So that is where I'm at with that one. It came out beautifully. Like I said, I'm gonna do a little bit of a steam block and then we'll do a photo shoot and I'll trim the ends. And this one will go off to the photographer and will eventually be a kit that you can purchase from Zen Yarn Garden. So I'm really, really pleased with that one. Um, it's a big oversized squishy shawl. I might knit this again for myself. Um, at this point, I don't wear shawls that much, but it is just a big garter squish and it would be so lovely in the fall and winter um, when the days are cold. So um, that one ended up taking about, oh, well, a skein and a half is 600 plus um, another three to 400, so right around a thousand yards. Um, the original pattern called for um, gradient mini skeins for each of the stripes, so if you have those in your stash, you could totally do that. And then, uh, like I said, there's just a little bit of sparkle on this. I think the word I used last time is not obnoxiously sparkly. Um, it really isn't. It just has a little bit of sparkle, and I think this would be really nice for um, a wrap, even for the evening. Um, so yeah, so that is finished. I did also finish a second project, although I'm not sure it's 100% finished. So let's talk about this. You know that I um, had started a couple weekends ago when I was on my own, I had started knitting a linen tee. And um, I chose the SD pattern, which is by Justina Lorkowska, who's Letty's Knits on Instagram. And um, the SD is E-S-T-E. -E. I don't know if that's exactly how it's pronounced, but that's how I've been pronouncing it. And I I knit it with my friend Christine's bamboo linen blend, which is um, Treasure Goddess yarns. Her bamboo linen blend is 100 yards. Um, I think it's a 50-50 bamboo and linen. Um, 100, sorry, 100 grams, 437 yards per skein. I used just under two skeins on this top, um, which I think is because I had some gauge differences because the top actually called for 1,000 yards. So I knitted in a little bit less. I finished it and I'm not 100% happy with it. So, um, this is the finished tee, and actually it looks pretty good when I look at it. Um, so this is kind of a um, top-down, it has the beginning, you work with kind of a contiguous um, uh, set in sleeve method where you're adding, um, you're working in the round and you are um, creating some increases for the sleeves, but you are also working on this beautiful lace pattern, which ends up falling kind of as shoulder panels. Um, and then you work back and forth for a little bit and then join together in the round um, and knit the rest of the body down and then do a one by one um, ribbing. And then you pick up and do the rest of your ribbing. You have a one by one around the neckline and then a one by one around the sleeves. Um, so what I will say is I'm not 100% happy with the fit of this sweater. Um, it's a little weird over the shoulders and um, the arms. And I think part of the issue is that I followed the pattern and picked up a certain number around the armholes. And I think actually I wanna pick up more around the armholes. I do still have a little bit of yarn left. Um, and so, what I think I'm going to do, I haven't woven in all of my ends yet, what I think I'm going to do is I'm probably going to unpick these armhole bands and I'm going to um, pick up a few more stitches around there so it's a little bit less tight because um, it just, this stops basically up at the top of my arm here and it's just slightly weird. It kind of pulls it in and um, it's a little bit of a weird affect and I'm not 100% pleased with it. So I think that might be my project for this coming weekend. I wasn't um, around much this past weekend so I didn't sit down and do it, um, but I think I'm going to do that and hopefully I will like the fit better on that. The pattern itself was easy to knit. I just, um, I don't know, something about it. It also just could be that it is a style of top that is not terribly flattering on me. Um, I tend to be a little bit um, broad up at the top. 
and um, this is kind of boxy and also I'm not sure it's the perfect color for my complexion so um, something about this is not sitting quite right and I'm gonna make a few more modifications and hopefully find something um, that will make me a little bit happier with it and if for some reason I can't then I will pass it along to someone else who um, will love it um, I still love the fabric it's creating I have another sweater quantity to create something else so I'll probably just pick a different shape and um, think about casting on something else for myself so um or I could actually rip this one out and um then go ahead and uh find a little something else if I would like to I'm just looking at um it looks like one of the ends I wove in was not perfect here um so yeah so uh this this is still a work in progress a little bit because I want to make a few more tweaks to it to see if I can um make it suit myself better however I will say that it is not terribly sheer I put it on with a flesh toned bra and it was not super sheer so I think I can wear it without a cami although I could wear it with a cami or over a dress if I so wanted to so again, that is the SD top, and I don't think it's problems with the pattern. I do think it's just, um, it might not be quite the right um, top for me, or quite the right fit, or it might not have knit it quite right. So I do want to spend a little more time um, experimenting with that. So that pretty much means that I, um, between these two and the, what did I show you last week? Oh, the sweater for Roxy. I pretty much cast off almost everything on my needles, which was kind of exciting. Um, so I have started a few new things and I still have a few more things to start, but I wanted to show you um, two things that I cast on and one of them is actually already half finished. So a while ago, I showed you a skein of green yarn. As you know, I am trying to work on um, knitted uh, uh, knit socks for charity, and I decided to do sort of a knit the rainbow. Um, and so I am on green in my rainbow, and the skein that I am currently using is a skein from um, Shirsty Cat Designs. So that is the label, and I purchased this at Ply Away here, which was mid-April, which is already two months ago. Woof! Um, so Shirsty Cat's Designed Dyed by Kelly Straub. This is her 100%, um, well, so this is BFL DK, which is 100% Superwash Blueface Lester, 246 yards to 100 grams. And I wound the cake up, and it is, um, sorry, the um, colorway, which I meant to tell you, is called Heart of the Forest. And it is greens and turquoise and a little bit of yellow and it is really I mean I guess it's sort of variegated but it's kind of semi-solid it's like all in the same color family so I'm not really sure what to call this um, because it doesn't necessarily read as a total variegated yarn um, I did not divide this into two because I had wound this up and then while we had company here this weekend, I needed to grab something that was really easy to grab that I didn't have to think about, that I didn't have to do a lot of counting for. And so what I did is I just grabbed this cake and I went and started a sock. Um, as it turns out, I probably um, should have divided this in two because I don't think I used everything I could have um, in the first sock, which also means the second sock won't use everything it could have. But what I decided to do is just do a quick basic sock. And I actually got the first one done um, this weekend which was kind of impressive um but we were doing a lot of riding around we went to the museum we ate we um visited some shops and we just kind of showed um his family around the city a little bit and so I had lots of knitting time in the car and I managed to finish one sock now of course this is a DK weight sock um I did 44 stitches which sets it up for a small to medium sock and I knit it approximately um for my foot these are small sock blockers so um I have been knitting the socks in very varying sizes um, and so I decided this one would be fine as a smaller sock if I had um, so in the past I have been doing um, toe up socks this one was a top down where I just cast on for my um, for my inch or so of ribbing at the top I knit a few inches of um, cuff leg and then went right into a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and then down to a rounded toe um, if I had divided the skeins a little bit better, I probably would have made the cuff a little bit longer and possibly even the foot a little bit longer because I would have had more yardage. Um, but I really was trying to make sure that I didn't run out of yarn. And again, this is a good reason why I knit toe up on a lot of the socks so I can basically just knit until I finish the half a skein. But since I only had one ball and just wanted to kind of um, do something in the car and do something really quick and roundy roundy, um, I did and this sock is gorgeous. 
Um, I haven't clipped the ends because I didn't have scissors with me, but I did um, break it and I did um, like Kitchener the toe and weave in the two ends. So the sock is basically done. Um, and then I have um, I have about uh, two thirds of the skein left. So I probably could have gone a little bit further, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make the other skein, the other sock to match. And then my green pair of socks will be done. I don't know if this will get worked on this week. This wasn't really in the plans. This again was just something that I grabbed because I needed a quick roundy roundy, something where I didn't have to really pay attention. So the deal is I have knit so many top-down vanilla socks that I pretty much have to count to cast on. And then um, I count a little bit in the heel when I figure out how long to make the heel flap. But then every, you know, and then I'm counting as I'm decreasing the gusset stitches, just making sure that I'm getting back to my right total. Um, but I can do this without any notes, um, without much thinking about it at all. So um, this is just a really easy pattern for me to take along with me anywhere I go. So that is my green sock progress. I'm really pleased with that. Um, hopefully, maybe I'll finish the second one before the end of the month. I still have blue and purple to go, and I would like to be able to send these off in um, September or October. So um, I don't know if I'll do Roy G. Biv or if I'll just do six rainbow pairs or precisely what I'll do, um, but I'm excited to be back on the rainbow sock train. So the final thing that I cast on this week, let me just put this away in my project bag. The final thing that I cast on this week was a sweater for myself. And this um, was kind of a last minute, oh, I want to do what everybody else is doing, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out cast on. Um, my knitting, a bunch of folks in my knitting group decided that they wanted to go ahead and make a Weekender sweater. Weekender being a pattern by Andrea Mallory Knits. Uh, no, Andrea Mallory, who is Drea Renee Knits. Um, and it is a pattern available on Ravelry and um, Andrea Mallory's website. And it is a fairly simple um, pullover uh, done in reverse stockinette with a few detail stitches and some ribbing. Excuse me, it's intended to be sort of sweatshirt-like. It's drop shoulder sleeves, um, very little shaping, and um, really kind of a blank canvas for whatever you want to do with it. And I have friends who are knitting it in commercial yarns, but I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be fun to use some hand spun? Because um, I've seen a couple hand spun weekenders and they're really pretty. And the thing about it is that the details are such that it doesn't really detract um, from the pattern itself or the hand spun because hand spun can be very busy. So um, last night was the first time I had time to cast on and I'm really, really pleased with my progress. I worked on this for about three or four hours last night um, and it is kind of an Erin weight yarn. The pattern um, was originally designed for Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is kind of a worsted Erin weight. Um, and I'm not getting exact gauge in the pattern, so I'm knitting um, a size smaller than I normally would knit for myself. Well, technically two sizes smaller, but it's going to end up a size, the finished measurements will be a size smaller. And so the pattern starts, it is knit from the bottom up, and you start with a split rib hem, so you knit the ribbing separately, and then you join to work in the round. And this is what I have so far. I'm really pleased to show you this. So... I have my front ribbing, I have my back ribbing, and then I have my knitting in the round. Um, I probably have about between two and three inches so far. So this is my hand spun. This was um, a patchwork kit that I got from Hello Yarn um, a while ago, and one braid of a fiber called Sour, which was in her shop. They are a variety of merinos and Falklands and Corydales. I don't remember all the details. I'd have to go back and look. Um, and it's just a wide variety of um, colors. So I am working from the first um, little ball, which was kind of the last bits that I applied together. And you can see it's got golds and reds and there are some pinks in there and oranges and a little bit of kind of blue and yellow and there was some purple in there and there are all kinds of things in these skeins because it's just bits and bobs of a lot of different fibers. So I have more purple in here. I have some sections where I've got some um, turquoise in there, some turquoise with some dark colors. I've got more red. I've just got a whole bunch of colors and I think this is going to be super, super fun and um, kind of kind of uh, patchworky and all the different colors and I'm really really excited about this. So I haven't wound these two up. These are each approximately eight ounces. This was just a little bit left over. I started with well I guess I have about 16 ounces. So all of this together is about 16 ounces um, because I had like a pound of patchwork and then I added one more braid so that's oh no so it's closer to 20 ounces. 
Okay, so these are probably each eight ounces, and then um, this last one was probably about four ounces. It was just the leftovers, um, and I'm really pleased with what I have so far. I am going to be following the lengths for the medium size, um, but I am knitting what basically amounts to the extra small size and will end up with the small size. Um, the reason I am doing that Although I'm going to have to look at this. I'm going to have to knit a little bit more and then measure to make sure I'm on. This is based on a gauge swatch that I did do. Um, I got about four stitches to the inch. And the sweater recommends a lot of ease. Um, the actual sweater pattern recommends 10 inches of ease. And that's a little bit more than I um, would like to have in my sweater. So I am aiming for about 44 inch finished. I have a 38 inch bust. So that's going to give me six inches of ease, which is going to give it that relaxed kind of sweatshirt feel, but not make it too oversized. So I'm really excited about this. I plan to work on this more this week um, and in the next couple weeks. And um, so I just... I'm, I'm so pleased. Every row is like a joy. Knitting with hand spun is magic because it's like waiting for the colors to change and seeing what they are next. Um, and I just think this is going to be super fun. Now, I did end up selecting a slightly different hand spun than I think I may have showed you previously. Um, and that's because this was a little bit heavier in weight than the one that I showed you previously. Um, and I liked the colors better. The colors in the other hand spun that I showed you... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Sip of tea. The colors in the hand spun that I showed you previously were red and purple and kind of a um, limey green. And it's not that I don't like them, but they are close to another sweater that I have. So I picked this one because I don't really have these colors in a sweater yet. Um, and so I really wanted to see what they would look like. So that is my progress there. I do have another pair of socks to cast on. I showed you the um, gradient blank for those last week. That is where I'm doing two um, at a time. Magic looping toe up, and um, that is what I need to cast on. I just finished the um, the Around Every Corner wrap yesterday, and so um, I'm going to start the new pair of socks this evening, which is also why the green socks may not get a lot of love this week. Um, but so my, my two main projects are this sweater and the socks. So, um, quick, one more quick sip of tea, and then I'll talk to you briefly about spinning. I don't have a ton to show you, um, and then I will get you out of here. So, um, because I, I basically, I don't have a lot to show you for spinning because I am still working on the same braid, and that is the um, Montana Corydale from uh, Apothecary Luxury Fibers, which I got at Playaway as well, and it's in teals and blues and grays. And this is the first bobbin that's done. This is two ounces of fiber. I have um, one ounce of fiber on a bobbin, and then I have um, approximately another ounce or a little bit over an ounce to spin. And I'll be honest, last night I didn't spin much because I really, really wanted to get into the knitting and cast on. Um, and I know that pretty soon I'm going to be doing nothing but spinning for the first three weeks of July, so I just decided to focus my efforts on knitting this past week. So I still have a ways to go on that braid, and I'll be working on that, but I decided to pull something else out of the stash that I wanted to spin um, just to show you, and this is a braid from Kumasi, who um, has been on Etsy. Um, Kumasi is K-O-O- um, K-O-O-M-A-S-E-E, -E, and they have been on Etsy, but they are just about to launch their own website, um, or they may have just launched their own website. Um, and they are an artist out of San Francisco, and they do beautiful dye work. I have spun quite a few braids from them. Um, and this one I got a while ago, and generally I tend towards more colorful braids, but every so often I really see a semi-solid braid that makes me go, ooh. And so this one, which is kind of um, orangey, reddy, coral-ish, um, it is called Happy Feet Harmonies, and it is a Falkland comb top. It is meant to be used, I believe, for sock yarn, um, and I am just really excited about spinning this one. It's going to be a really nice kind of semi-solid braid um, with a little bit of variegation. It's just, it's got oranges and, like I said, reds, and then just the barest hint of pink. It's going to be a little coral, I think, um, and I'm just, I'm really into this color right now, which is too bad because it is not the best color against my face, um, as I proved with my coral reef um, linen uh, pullover, but um, it is a really fun color, and so I'm going to be spinning this, and this will be ready to go into the shop. 
So I think that's about all I have for you this week. I hope that you are doing well, that you are enjoying your crafting. My husband is going out of town again this weekend, so I hope to get lots of knitting done. And I also hope to um, spend some time on my quilt. I would love to piece my quilt top. Um, and so that is kind of a goal for this. Um, my husband's leaving on Thursday and he'll be back on Monday. It is not a long weekend for me. I will still need to work Thursday, Friday, and Monday. Um, but my hope is that I will have some time to get some quilting done and also some knitting and be able to show you lots of things next week. So I hope that you have a great week ahead and I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!